Are we live? I believe we're live. How you doing, everybody? It's your boy, Wardy, and welcome to our latest breaking news live show, one that we have to do again because I was in a car when the news first happened. I cannot go to sleep without talking about this more because the entire dynamic of the New York Metropolitan offense will be forever changed thanks to this move for the 2024 season as they have inked J.D. Martinez on a one-year $12 million deal that's basically a $14 million deal that for the Mets this year is a $9 million deal, but actually it's a $4.5 million deal with deferred payments kicking in on $1.5 million from 2034 to 2038. All I know, it's a very creative deal. The Mets got J.D. Martinez at their price, and now their lineup is looking like one of the better ones in all the National League. Not the best, we all know that, but they are in such a better position than what they just were a couple hours prior, and that is what I want to break down in tonight's late night at the time of recording this midnight live show. We're live on YouTube. We're live on Twitter. Make sure to smash those buttons. And again, happy to have you all in here per usual as we break down together the latest news, the New York Metropolitan have acquired, yes, J.D. Martinez. This is a move that a lot of us Mets fans were hoping, dying for all offseason long. I, of course, found myself in that category. I was preaching to you guys how many times that, yes, the Mets need, absolutely need to do everything in their power to land J.D. Martinez. He's right out there. If the Mets don't land him now, they're going to be looking to trade for a guy just like him at the MLB trade deadline, more than likely. So if you can get him now, that's one less thing to worry about. And finally, for the first time since the Universal DH started, the Mets have not only a competent DH, one of the best in Major League Baseball to back up Pete Alonso in a walk year. Just take a moment to process this reality because once you grasp it, you come to the realization that this Mets team on paper now is in a much better position than what they were just a couple hours prior. I see Harrison in here. Al, Dave, great member and friend as always. Rupin, my man Ant, how you doing? Subway to Shea as always. Make sure to check him out. Frank, Johnny P, Chris, how you doing? Milo, Hello, Josh, Justin, Matthew, great member. Everyone chiming in live on a replay. However you're watching this, continue to smash that like and subscribe button. If you're watching on Twitter, make sure to hit that follow button. Retweet, greatly appreciate it. If you want to interact with me too, just make sure you chime into the YouTube live version. Of course, I want to give you guys a taste on Twitter, but I also want to emphasize that on YouTube is where we will be doing the bulk of the interaction, as we always do. You're late. I'm not late. If anything, you're late, fiend dog. I was the first schmuck to go live on YouTube today discussing the D JD Martinez news. I literally did it. I sprinted out of an Italian restaurant, which you know is not something that I would like to do. I, I love my eats, of course. I saw the John Heyman suite as soon as it happened. I dropped my phone. I looked at everyone on the table. I said, oh my God, the Mets finally got him. I had heart palpitations, zero to 100 for a couple seconds. Then I calmed down, hopped in the car, half hour just going bananas with you guys as we saw. But I want to break this down in further depth. As you guys see, you got the highlight running you got the stats down below everything you need to know about jd martinez but i really want to emphasize not only your further reactions as you're watching the live chat but also get into once again why this is such a big deal for the new york mets so again everyone for chiming in appreciate you guys and gals and let's have a fun one breaking down down this discussion ah oh. Man, what a day. What a day. Who expected this? Who expected this? I will say this much. I will say this. I had a feeling that something would happen only because I was out of town for the majority of the day. And lately, when it's been a Friday or a Saturday, when I've been going out, that's when things have happened. I mean, from the Sean Benai signing, the David Stearns official announcement, Adam Adovino re-signing, there's at least a couple more. And even going back to the MLB trade deadline last year, too, when Mark Cannon was dealt in others, I wasn't home for it. So bizarre oddly enough i had to be on the road in order to make this happen and yet here we are so jd martinez is a new york metropolitan to break down a little bit further for people wondering exactly how this contract works because it's a unique one david stearns he did the right move he waited he stayed patient he stayed vigilant and i told you guys every single time i told you every single time when the mets have been connected to him that yes it's not a guarantee to happen but they want him the Mets have wanted him all offseason long. They have just wanted him at their price. And yes, the homers is wrong in regards to the graphic, guys. I've had that JDM stat bar created at least the past six months. Yes, I have the RBIs and the homers messed up. So apologies on my end. 33 bombs, 103 homers. If you think you had 103 homers last year and you truly believe that, if you're going to talk down on me for it, you got bigger problems, my friend, and you don't watch baseball. And I, I'm not calling you out specifically in the chat, Rupin. I'm just saying in general, because somehow, some way, we're going to find a schmuck that makes a bigger deal out of that than they need to. But I, I'm pumped. 
I'm so effing pumped about this for more reasons than one. And before we get into it, should never touch grass so Mets news can break. Seriously, you said it, guys. And shout out, as always, to our amazing sponsor at BetUS. A little bit more about them later on in the show because, guys, now is the time to hammer the Mets over under on wins. Now is the time. Seriously, the odds are going to change in the next 12 to 4, 24 hours. Now is the time to hammer. We'll get into that shortly. As always, make sure to click the link down below. As always, that way you get 125% bonus for your first three deposits with your favorite sports book at BetUS. Bet responsibly. I signed JD to the same amount in the show. There you go. So the JD Martinez contract, let's talk about it together. Let's talk about it together, everybody. What stands out so much? $4.5 million is what's on the books this year. So with 110% tax, $9 million, right? You remember You remember when everyone was going frantic saying, oh, the Mets only have $10 more million to work with months ago, right? Because, of course, you had to believe everything that Andy Martino said to an absolute T. You know how Andy was the same one to throw cold water on this situation the entire time, the entire time, when at the same time the writing's been on the wall, the Mets will get him if he comes down to their price. And J.D. Martinez says, you know what? Why in God's name would I go be an L.A. Angel when I know that any playoff hopes I had are going to die as soon as I land there versus coming to the Mets and knowing that there's at least a decent opportunity to crack playoffs this year. There's definitely a better one comparing between the two teams, right? And he decides to do the deferment option, right? Shohei Otani who? It's kind of funny how from Shohei, the new DH in town for the Dodgers, maybe we'll see what happens there. Talked about him on Bleach Report earlier today. If you guys didn't check it out already, breaking down basically the biggest news controversy scandal in baseball right now Shohei Otani 4.5 million dollar gambling debt with his interpreter it's an interesting one make sure to check it out if you haven't already but the Mets bring in JD Martinez the Dodgers DH last year they get him on 4.5 million dollars this season 9 million dollars total with 110 percent tax but then you're not having to worry about anything until 2034 to 2038 who gives a shit Bobby Benilla, step aside. It's J.D. Martinez day once we get to 2034, and hopefully rightfully so. And the beauty about this, guys and gals, is that even just in this scenario, just hypothetically, even if everything went wrong, right, even if everything goes wrong with J.D. Martinez, the Mets will still be able to flip him at the trade deadline and get assets for him. That's the beauty about this as well. There's no long-term commitment. It's a one-year deal. The fact that there isn't even a second-year option is what makes this even better. Literally just awesome for the Mets in this stage to push for playoffs right now. And now they're bringing in a that in case you've been living under a rock has been one of the best sluggers in major league baseball and will likely continue to heading into his age 36 age 37 season uh but let's see here everybody that's been watching live on a replay happy to have you all in here appreciate everyone watching on twitter too am i looking at someone said it am i looking at this right 103 home runs 33 rbis this is massive <laughs> that's hilarious shout out everyone watching on twitter as well and i know that this is a late night show everybody so my apologies. We'll probably go live again sometime tomorrow, either just breaking down the Yanks game or also getting into more on what this means. But for those that are unaware on just what the Mets are getting here in J.D. Martinez, just, just to reiterate just how good this guy is, right? 2023 season, 33 bombs, 61 runs scored, 103 RBIs, a 271, 321, 572 clip, a 135 WRC+, plus, which means he's 35% better than the average batter in baseball, a 2.2 war, which means he himself acquainted for over two wins single-handedly, basically, for the Dodgers last season. We look at his 2022 campaign. This is the interesting one. 16 home runs, 76 runs scored, 62 RBIs in his final year in Boston, a 274 average, a 341 OBP, and a 448 slug. On 119 WRC Plus. The Mets, led by Billy Upper at the time in 2022, pushed heavily to acquire JD Martinez at the MLB trade deadline. It didn't happen because Boston was very stubborn in their price point for him and he stayed home, dealt with back ailments for the entirety of the season for the most part, especially in the second half. And then as he goes to the Dodgers, refines his game. And what I love so much about JD Martinez is now at the age of 36 for his season, he's been working with driveline this offseason, as I mentioned in our reactionary show a little bit earlier. The fact that you have a guy, a grizzled vet like this with a World Series championship reign already on his resume, doing all what it takes to win, doing all the accolades possible at this point, still trying to fine-tune and work on his game. That is the most impressive thing. I absolutely love that. The Mets get him on a beyond team-friendly contract, and now they have power protection for Pete Alonso that they've never had, and it could not come at a better time for both Pete Alonso and the New York Mets. 
Pete Alonso, for those that don't know, sees more pitches out of the zone and makes contact with more pitches out of the zone than any other batter in Major League Baseball. Now, J.D. Martinez is likely going to be the man behind him for the vast majority of the season, providing not only power protection, but a true cleanup hitter in that fourth spot for them, where Pete Alonso is going to start to see pitches that he usually doesn't see. And that is massive for a man in a walk year that's looking for an absolute bag, regardless on who he gets it from. Go out, Pete. Do your thing, baby. I know he's pumped up about this, rightfully so. And you look at this Mets 1-5, through five, and I'm salivating at the mouth. Just the thought of this is one of the best 1-5s through fives in all Major League Baseball, truthfully. When things go right, this is very much that potential. Leading off, Brandon Nimmo, who can easily find himself in the 25-plus home run category this year with the way he's been swinging the bat the past couple years. Number two, Francisco Lindor, 30 bombs, 100 RBIs, gold glove, if not platinum glove defense. How you doing? Best shortstop in the NL. We love to see it. Batting third. Oh, yeah, the best slugger, you could rightfully argue, if not in just the NL potentially all major league baseball Pete Alonso looking for another 50 plus home run season in his walk year now for the Metropolitans and yeah JD Martinez let's bring in Julio just Daner's JD Martinez in here that's going to give you 25 to 30 plus maybe even 35 this season we'll see how it looks and then oh yeah Francisco Alvarez right who right now according to bet us is at plus 225 odds to hit 30 or more home runs this season if you don't place that bet I know damn sure I'm going to I've already placed it twice I will do it a third time it is that good now you get on to the Jeff McNeils of the world obviously the Brett Beatty's who's had a fantastic spring including a multi-run home run today his second home run in as many games or so or at least two in his past three looking awesome Harrison Bader towards the bottom of the line Starling Marte hopefully can be alive and be productive you know the Mets depth now looks so much better and yes it does drop off after the fifth spot when evaluating power but there's also question marks and there's hopefully answers we're going to find in the Beatty's the Vientos's if he stays on the roster to start the year you can make the argument that viento should probably start the year in triple a that way he gets everyday reps but maybe the mets are going to consider him and brett Beatty really competing third base to start the year maybe that's a possibility that we'll see right what does this mean for the bench and guys like chi man Choi, for example dj stewart well certainly one of these guys is not going to be on the team at the very least there's potential that both of them won't be on the team now because of jd martinez dj's definitely starting the year in triple a chi man Choi looked like an initial lock to be on the bench but now after the signing of J.D. Martinez, you have to wonder how much need, how much interest do the Mets still have in him starting the year on the roster. And he's an interesting one, too, to evaluate because if he starts the year with the Mets, he makes around, I think, $3.5 million. If he starts the year in AAA, he makes thirty-five grand per month for the amount of time that he is there in AAA and Syracuse. What am I trying to collect here, everybody? The Mets have made a move that is going to solidify them now at least one through five, one through six, as one of the better laps in Major League Baseball. Yes, you're going to have your question marks when you get from the sixth spot on, but still, the Mets are in a much better position. You just went from a Mark Vientos who has the power, who has the potential, we know that, but also still has a very loopy swing and has yet to provide quality defense at the hot corner consistently. Now, now you're bringing in Julio and let's just go down the numbers right 2014 let's start there in Detroit right after his stint in Houston and might I add Houston connection where he started his career in 2011 and 2013 oh yeah he knew David Stearns David Stearns was the uh was the assistant GM there in Houston during that time so they're rekindling that relationship a decade plus later very cool Detroit Tiger JD Martinez 23 bombs 76 RBIs and a 154 WRC plus 2015 JD Martinez 38 bombs 102 RBIs a 136 WRC plus 20 2016 J.D. Martinez, 22 home runs, uh, 68 RBIs, a 143 WRC+. 2017 J.D. Martinez, 45 nukes, 104 RBIs, 167 WRC+. That is taking full advantage of the juice ball era. 2018 J.D. Martinez, first year, full year in Boston, absolutely raking. 43 bombs, 130 RBIs, a 170 WRC+. Plus, almost double better than the average batter in baseball. That is how good his 2018 season was. 2019, 36 home runs, 105 RBIs, a 139 WRC+. Plus. 2020 short and stip, doesn't matter. 2021, 28 home runs, 99 RBIs, a 126 WRC+. Plus. 2022, 6 
16 bombs, 62 RBIs, 119 WRC plus, dealing with back ailments for the majority of the year. And then most recently, 2023, as I mentioned, 33 home runs, not 100 plus. <laughs> Don't get confused with the graphic. 103 RBIs and a 135 WRC plus. That, my friends, is what we call effing consistency. And why do I love this even that much more? Because this is not a move the same as, say, a Nelson Cruz, where he's 40 to 42 years of age, where, say, you had 30 bombs last year, but then you see a significant drop off because Nelly really dropped off when he was done in Minnesota for the most part. And then he got dealt to Tampa and he just really wasn't the same bad after that. And now he's a coach. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, he's working in the Dodgers organization actually, which is crazy, but no less JD Martinez still has age on his side right now. And yes, the swing and miss is something that we're going to have to evaluate this year. Cause as we look at his baseball savant numbers, there's a lot of sexiness and there's also a lot of, ah, I'm not looking forward to that. And let's explain what exactly this is. Carson says, Ranger shit on Boston. Alonzo gets protected. Very good day, Tyler. Very good day. Absolutely. My Ranger fans out there are Temi Panarin. Breadman with the Hattie. Beating Boston Bruins 5-2. You'll love to see it. If you're not a Rags fan, I'm sorry to hear that. I don't even like to use the term Rags. I know, Carson, you do. I think that's honestly an insult to them because that's like from the Islanders and Devils fans, I like to say. Regardless, not to get on a tangent, happy for my Rangers. My Knicks lost today, but that's okay. 3-1 and one on a road trip with OG Ananobi and Randall Hurt. We'll take that every day of the week. But as we now get into what we see here with Baseball Savant, 93rd percentile in batting run value. Very impressive. 39 percentile baseball uh, base running run value. I don't give a rat's ass. As we get into XWOBA, XW, um, <clears throat> here we have 91 percentile. Fantastic at 369. Expected batting average, 77 percentile at 271 this past year. Expected slugging, 96 percentile and 553. Average exit velocity, again, 35 year old. Julio now going into his age 36 season. There's only a couple guys that hit the ball harder than him in Major League Baseball. 96, 98th percentile rather, 93.4 on the average exit velo. Barrel percentage, yeah, he barrels baseballs like a mofo. 98th percentile, 17.1. Hard hit percentage, 55.1, 98th percentile. Sweet spot percentage, 97th percentile, 41.1. This guy absolutely mashes. He rakes. That is what he's going to do for this Metropolitan team. Chase rate, 28th percentile. Whip percentage, 7 percentile. K percentage, 9 percentile. Walk percentage, not terrible, especially for a slugger like him, 35 percentile. So J.D. Martinez, big swing and miss guy. We know that. He's going to chase. You're going to see him chase a down, slider down away probably more than Pete Alonso this year. But it doesn't matter because if you're getting 20 to 25 home runs, if you're getting 80 to 100 RBIs, if you're getting an 8 to 900 OPS, far and away, easily the best power protection the Mets are getting at the DH position in a very very long time this cannot be understated just how massive a move this is and before the schmucks out there go ahead and say oh warning it doesn't matter it's a one-year deal for a team that is a fringe playoff team why does it matter it matters because you're not only getting the on-field product with jd martinez you're getting the off-field product you're getting a championship pedigree player a true winner a guy that knows what it takes to win understands the clubhouses really well and is known as a hitting savant just imagine the type of potential positive impact he could have on a youngster a power a young power hitter in mark vientos brett Beatty, and all the other guys in this clubhouse jd is going to help not only command the clubhouse as is as a veteran leader that knows what it takes to win but he is going to be such a helping hand to the younger players in the organization that are still trying to get their proper footing led by vientos and Beatty, as i mentioned it would have been awesome to have them have him weeks ago in the beginning of spring but it's better late than never the regular season for the Mets officially begins Thursday March 28th we got some time I expect Julio to make his spring debut this weekend very excited for that everybody and I'm, I'm just I'm juiced to the gills right now in excitement because this is a move that we have been calling we have been crying for for so long and I know and I know there have been a lot of Mets fans out there that have been like I'm all in on the Mark Vientos ride and I understand that I respect that but as I told you guys, it was two options. Sign J.D. Martinez or give Mark Vientos consistent reps. The Mets have proven that they are not ready to give Mark Vientos consistent reps at the DH position because they value J.D. Martinez and his immediate bat for a playoff contending team more. And I think that is the right move for this organization. Even in a year where you're trying to find what you have, who's not to say that we still can't find what we have in Mark Vientos? Maybe he ends up balling out and pressing us at the, at the hot corner and then we find ourselves in a position where the Mets get creative on matchups. Not that I want to see Beatty and Vientos in platoon roles, especially after the great spring Beatty's had thus far, but it is still something that I'm sure Carlos Mendoza and all of them will be pondering. 
Carson mentions this in the chat too, and I do want to bring it up because it's a great point. When we look at J.D. Martinez and how he was last season, right? Let's look at the numbers here. Very, very impressive with J.D. Martinez when you looked at... And Carson, you're the one who tweeted this actually, so shout out to you. I was going to reference the, reference this regardless. Shout out to you, Carson. Absolute beauty at Mets Weekly. Make sure to check him out if you guys haven't already. He does awesome stuff, especially if you guys are like very analytically involved. If you love the nerdier side of baseball, and I don't mean that as a slight. I mean that for the people that absolutely love the numbers, that live and breathe with them. Carson is your guy. Make sure to check him out. 33 home runs we saw in 479 plate appearances from J.D. Martinez last season 45 home runs per 650 plate appearances 39 expected home runs at city field and 479 plate appearances 479 plate appearances he had an expected just under 40 home runs if we get to all the way to 650 plate appearances 53 expected home runs at city field why is it important that i'm saying this statistic and shout out once more carson for tweeting it earlier it shows you that J.D. Martinez has been hitting bombs so deep and so far that City Field should not be a massive factor into, say, a lack of power production. Even though that, yes, it's not the best when you're looking at the batter's eye, my good friend Anthony Recker, former Met, will tell you himself during his time at City Field. But what I can also tell you is that he has proven and shown that, yes, even if I'm batting, say, more of a pitcher's park, it doesn't mean that I can't drive the ball far and out of there. He is one of the best true sluggers in Major League Baseball. He's not slow down yet and again even if he's on a down year how in god's name how could you fathom that anyone would perform better in said position over jd martinez when evaluating the mets current options that's a crazy thing to me or you look great tonight grant you look great tonight absolute beauty make sure to check out jenny mets as always make sure to check out my absolute beauty of a friend jim riley ball cap sports jim came out with his thoughts on jd martinez him and i alike have been preaching to the choir that jd martinez needs to be a met we're both happy to see it happen. Jim, happy to have you in here, brother. Make sure to subscribe to Ballcap if you haven't already. What's up, certified? Everyone chiming in live on our replay. Everyone on Twitter watching, too. Thank you so much for the donation. Alexis says, uh, let's see, for the first time, the Mets have a real DH. That is the big thing. That is the big thing. Finally having a DH that knows what the hell he's doing. Oh, my goodness. It doesn't get any better than that. I mean, more than anything, I just have such a sigh of relief now. I feel like I can breathe. And more than anything... Guys and gals, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is probably the most excited I've been for a bat and probably the most prominent slugger the Mets have acquired externally since Yoan Cespedes. Think about it. Since the Mets acquired Yoan Cespedes, who have the Mets acquired as a better home run bat externally? Not talking internal, so don't even throw out Pete Alonso's name or anything like that. When speaking externally, unless I'm missing an obvious one, no, it wasn't even Jay Bruce because J.D. Martinez is still far and away the better player between himself and Jay Bruce. Even Jay at his best in that hitter's park there in Cincy. It's got to be J.D. Mar- uh, got to be J.D. Martinez, right? So we're looking at, again, the best external power bat that the Mets are bringing in since quite literally Yoenis Cespedes 2015. Nine years ago. Now we find ourselves fast forwarding roughly a decade later. Will we get the type of production similarly that we got out of a Yoenis Cespedes? Will we have that type of spark, that true impact in the heart of the order, right in the meat of the slime, batting cleanup? Vogi, you guys are killing me. I absolutely love it. But this is huge. This is absolutely huge. This is going to do wonders for this lineup in more ways than one. Carlos Correa, that's hilarious. Correa for a day. He was never even official, so we can't even say that. He literally was never even official, so I'm not going to call that. The only good thing that Carlos Correa provided us Mets fans, well, specifically me, was just content and entertainment. The fact that I got to ask Steve Cohen just a question, the stats on Correa, he gave me a nothing answer. And it was in headlines for like 48, 72 hours because no one could get an interview with Steve at the time was hilarious. Um, that was my the only upside to the Carl's uh, Correa sweepstakes. And I see a lot of you guys watching on YouTube here. Continue to smash that like and subscribe button. Help us get to a couple hundred likes whenever you're watching this. I know a lot of you guys will be watching this on replay. And that's perfectly fine. On Twitter, we're at a whopping 500. 500. You you guys are either on the West Coast. You guys are either staying up late. You can't get sleep like me. I'm sweating bullets. I have been on an absolute 
heater. You would think that I just pounded a bunch of coffees because as soon as the news happened, I have been locked the F in since then. Now, before we go further in the show, everybody, like I said, I got to talk to you guys about the awesome odds at BetUS because like I said, I'm not just saying this because they're my sponsor. I'm saying this because if you're a sports better, how are you not considering hammering this right now? So join me as always here at BetUS, everybody, and let's break down why exactly you should hammer right now their over-under on wins for the regular season. So, as we go here, let's get Baseball Savant out of there. Let's sign in. And let me show you guys and gals what we're loving here at BetUS. So, again, if you guys want to get in on NHL in season action, NBA in season action, we've been hitting a lot lately on the channel. So, I hope you guys have been following along for my respective sports betters. But as we take a look at MLB regular season wins, everybody, we've talked about over the past week and a half when we were at the official BetUS house with Jim at Ball Cap Sports, Robbie Hyde, Draven at Mark, Mike from Stark Raving Sports, in Port St. Lucie. That was an awesome trip, awesome time. And we're going to continue continue to emphasize New York Metropolitans over or under 81 and a half wins for the regular season. I'm what do you do? You just need to put money down. That's all I can say. Literally, I'm putting 110 to 100 right away. Right away. You don't even second guess it. You don't even second guess it. Over 81 and a half, you ride the heater. That's what you, you got to lock in. This is such an easy hammer. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I absolutely love the fact that that's going on. And I said it earlier, and I'll show you guys again. When we look at Francisco Alvarez, this in particular is absurd. Absolutely absurd. Let me find uh, MLB player projections here for this season. Francisco Alvarez, regular season total home runs. Over 22 and a half, minus 125. And they have them to get 30 or more, plus 225. Take your choice. This is, I mean, this is, this is free money. This is literally, this is literally free money. There's, that's just ridiculous. So again, if you guys are sports bettors like me, you like to get in on the action. You guys are excited for our unique Wordy and Wine parlays that we'll be doing, breaking down our post game shows throughout the regular season. Make sure you get in on the action today by checking out BetUS, clicking the link down below. That way, you too, as you sign up, get a 125% bonus when not your first, not your second, but your first three deposits. Just ridiculous odds. Taking the under is just absurd. I don't care. Even if you're, a, if you're a heavily pessimistic Mets fan I don't see how you take the under right now I don't and even with Kodai Singa not starting the year in the rotation that is how confident I feel in this Mets team at absolute bare minimum hitting there but as we go back to my main slide just an FYI my intro will run for a second apologies in advance everybody I can't shorten up in time there you go now we're back at this thing guys and gals how we feeling my question to everybody watching this is now that the Mets have acquired J.D. Martinez, they're one through five, one of the better ones in all the NL. What, as things currently stand, is your win-loss prediction for the Mets this season as things currently stand? Assuming that they don't make any other significant moves before the regular season begins. Yes, Jordan Montgomery is out there. Yes, the Mets should absolutely sign him. Is it at all possible? I highly doubt it. It really took a lot for J.D. to get to their level to the point of deferments involved, so I'm not going to get my hopes up at all there. But as things currently stand, where do you have the Mets on their over under wins, right? Because again, Bet US has them at 81 and a half. That's crazy. I want to know where you guys have it. Really, really curious. Cespedes to Martinez. Cubans are good for the Mets. Yes, they are. And they hit absolute nukes, baby. We love the Cubans. Sign me up. We got to get more of them for sure. I see 85. I see 86. I see 90. I see 77, you schmuck. Even though that very well is a possibility. The Mets maybe will end up with the same wins as last year. But man, oh man, a lot more things need to go wrong, in my opinion, for that to happen. Or at least, you know, quite a bit from the jump, too. And might, might I add, that's also going through a lot of your starting pitching options that you didn't have last year, per se, when looking at young prospects headlined by Christian Scott, where they very well can have a solid impact on the team at some point this year. And says 84 to 87. He said, you know what? I'm not picking a number. <laughs> the Ranger Central says 86. Shout out to you, Core Python. Um, let's see, 85 to 88-ish, says Michael, 81 to 87. Guys, 81 to 87, I'm asking for a number, okay? That's like basically picking 1 through 10 if you're saying 81 through 87. Make up your mind. It's not that difficult, everybody. 87, 75 is a record there. That's what you're thinking, says Matt. Okay, let's see here. 88 and 74 is a record, says Alan. Um, Hank, you were right. These Cubans have my mower. Dale, Dale Gribble, says Paul in the chat. I don't know that reference. I apologize. I'm, I'm assuming that's a movie or a show reference that I'm just missing completely. 14 wins, trade McNeil, then we'll talk. Jeff is not going to get traded as soon as some may think, even though I will say I wouldn't be shocked if he is 
chopped by the deadline, depending on the status of the team. That's still wait and see, though. Very premature on that front. Much of news after Senga stirs his cooking. He absolutely is none of your business. Thank you for the $10 holla. Greatly appreciate that. Here's the thing about David Stearns, all right? The amount, you know, let me kick up. Let me let me do this whole thing. I, you know what? I know. I know the Mets are not like a World Series contender right now. I'm fully aware of that. But let me just kick my feet up for a second and talk to you guys for a minute. You want to know why? The amount of you schmucks all off season long, I had to deal with your nonsense saying the Mets are signing a bunch of nobodies. These relievers make absolutely no sense. David Stearns is a worse hire than Billy Upward by far. He has no vision. He has no clue what he's doing. Have you shut up now? Have you stopped? I don't want, I don't even want an apology. Because, again, I did not know for certain if J.D. Martinez was going to happen or not. I just knew it's something that you can't write off because they've had the interest there. But between the bullpen acquisitions the Mets have done, the depth they've added to their rotation, yes, of course, we love Amante, and yes, we want Singa back in the rotation. But all things considered, this move just made David Stern's offseason go from whatever ranking you initially had to another step above. That is how significant this move is to add him in this. So to all you schmucks out there that, that had no problem all offseason long going out of their way to try to rag on me just for being a fairly, fairly optimistic Mets fan, when I definitely called them out with moves this offseason where I was left wanting more, feeling underwhelmed. To all you guys, you can continue to be the pessimist that you want, but do not start hopping on the train when things go right. That's what I will leave you with. But I do know we have a lot of diehard fans that are just fed up because you've been fans to say 20, 30, 40, 50 F in years, and you just want to see the team be competing for playoffs. I understand that too. I just hope that a lot of people are at least open, open-minded a little bit, their eyes open a little bit to the news with J.D. Martinez that David Stearns has had a plan and the Mets are not really deviating from their vision. That's that's the other thing. Their, their outlook on the season is different now. We understand that. But the vision, the thought process has always been the same. At our price, right? It makes sense. We're not going to necessarily go out of our way, but if he, if he meets us at a point where it's comfortable, we are going to do it. So by pouncing the way that they did, they're not even spending $10 million on him this year with 110% tax. You cannot go wrong if you're the Mets here, truthfully. Even if everything goes wrong with JDM, this was still a win of a signing as of today, and I will 100% stand by that. Wardy, it's that time of the month. If the Braves suck, give me a hell yeah. They don't suck, but we're Mets fans, and we're biased, so we're going to say it anyway. On three, one, two, three. Hell yeah! There we go, baby. Pat, absolute beauty. We got to get those rolling throughout the post games of the regular season. I cannot wait to take live callers with you all. We're going to have so much effing fun this year, guys. This is just, I think this year is going to be so much fun to cover in the sense that it's going to be enjoyable. One, that's great. And two, even if, even though the Mets are going to get the doors blown open many times, many games, I think we're really going to finally have a group of games, uh, hopefully stretches where it's just entertaining baseball, win, lose, or draw, whatever it may be. That's what we want, right? We want entertaining baseball, pushing for playoffs. We want things to be stressful but and entertaining as we get towards the end of the regular season, hopefully cracking in that final wild card spot, if not higher, and take it from there, right? That's how I. That's where I stand. I know that's where a lot of you guys feel the same. Um, if the Mets are able to get bounce back season from Marte and McNeil, they have a deep lineup, one through seven. Absolutely. I have a lot of faith in McNeil's bounce back. Marte, he's been healthy this spring, which has been awesome, but he's just been healthy. He's just been a body out there. I mean, let's be frank. He has been absolutely god-awful. But the reason why I'm not going to buy much stock into his lack of production this spring is because Tommy Pham was the worst hitter I ever saw in any spring training, and he went on to be the most productive player for the Mets in many ways last year offensively. Not in the sense of leading home runs and RBIs, but clutch hits, really knowing what it takes to win, having a smart attitude in that clubhouse. I agree with what he said, too, after he left. Tommy Pham knows what it's like to be in winning clubhouses. Yes, he's blunt. And as someone who even had the privilege of meeting him outside of a baseball setting last year, because I literally just bumped into him and I have a line that happened last summer. I can tell you that this is someone who cares deeply about not only himself, his performance, but the culture too. And there was a lot of cultural problems with the Mets clubhouse last year with a lack of drive with guys outside of the core and Nimmo, Lindor, Alonzo. There was a lot of fluctuation after that. 
And bringing in a J.D. Martinez is really going to help in that mix too. You're going to help bring in a guy that's a no-nonsense type mentality, knows what it takes to win, and ultimately is going to be a helping hand to the guys that feel like they need it. Of course, J.D. Martinez is probably not going to go out of his way to be like, hey, I can help all you guys. Like, this is therapy session. Tell me how you really feel. Tell me why your defense is trash. You know, like, it's not going to be like that, but it's going to be proper guidance, stuff that you haven't been necessarily getting as much from certain guys. And being the hitting guru that he is, I think that's another thing as a true hitting savant rather he's someone that's going to come in and have quite the positive impact on a lot of these players as i mentioned already um let's see tommy's such a legend he absolutely is i will always be a tommy fan fan he's an a lot of people took what he said last year the wrong way i did not take it in a negative way whatsoever but a lot of people mis misunderstood it thought he was just talking shit on the team as he was leaving that was basically it not the case tommy even said that he let the doors open for him to come back in the organization when he was actively in playoffs with the Arizona Diamondbacks last year on their World Series run. If that isn't Tommy Pham, I don't know what is. Pham doesn't give a shit about anyone's feelings. I love it. 100%. 100%. Yeah, we're over 100 live viewers on Twitter right now. Absolutely bananas. Appreciate everyone watching live on a replay. To my Twitter viewers, if you guys want to interact with me chat-wise, make sure you're chiming into the YouTube version as well, where we have close to 25,000 subscribers. Help us get to that point by continuing to smash that like and subscribe on. Thank you all so much in advance. Once we hit 25K, we're going to be doing an awesome giveaway on the channel. Same thing once we hit 30K. And, of course, in between, we'll be doing giveaways too. With the regular season right around the corner, I would love to do another big giveaway soon. So all you guys got to do is smash those buttons if you haven't already for your most consistent coverage on all things Mets all season and off-season long here on YouTube as we're not directly affiliated with the Mets or SNY, even though they have worked with SNY in the past. I'm very grateful for that. And hopefully we'll be doing more things with them again this year. Bleach Report, as I mentioned, make sure to check me out there, guys. I have weekly segments with them. Was just on there yesterday. We'll be back on with them Tuesday. If I'm not mistaken, today's Friday. at yeah, Tuesday and Thursday next week, I should be back on BR. So be on the lookout for that. But aside from that, everybody, now I just kind of want to take some of your questions before we go a little bit further because I feel like I've said a lot on the JD Martinez front and how excited I am. And ultimately, I just really hope it's going through the skulls of everybody that this is quite literally an insane, insane pickup for the Mets to get at the price point that they got him. That is the most awesome thing to me. 849. Let's see. Is that total or no? That's live, Grant. That's live, my man. And Grant, if you retweeted, thank you so much. Let me see. Thank you. That that definitely helps a lot. If you guys don't know Jenny Metz, he is the largest Mets fan page on Twitter. Has over, what are you, over 60,000 followers now, you absolute beauty. 66K. Make sure you guys follow Grant for all different types of Mets coverage posts on the latest news. Of course, you see it right away on Twitter. And also different giveaways that he does pretty much on a daily basis. So make sure to check out my boy. Um, let's see there. Wardy, I have a question for you. I'm going to opening day. Does JDM play opening day? 1,000%, Michael. 1,000%. I don't see how JDM doesn't play opening day. Furthermore, I'll be very surprised if JDM doesn't play in games as soon as this weekend. Um, as long as he's not completely rusty, like he was just working with driveline. I know for certain he's been seeing some type of live pitching this offseason to stay fresh, obviously, and hand with him at driveline and working on his swing. I fully expect JDM to get in the lineup very, very soon, as soon as this weekend. I don't know if you answered this race as Frankie. I just joined. Do you think he'll be ready for opening day? Just answer that, Frankie. There you go. Perfect timing. That was hilarious. The Mets were able to win close to 80 games last year with that roster. I don't know how anyone can say this team isn't going to win 80 plus games this year. That's that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Like, so granted, I know us Mets fans know far too much about when things go wrong. They go really, really wrong for us. Okay. We thought, oh, yes, we got ourselves Max Scherzer. Yes, Justin Verlander filled the void of Jacob deGrom. Yes, could I sink coming straight from the MPB? Yeah. Edwin Diaz is out for the season. Justin Verlander is going to miss the first plus month of the season. Max Scherzer is a schmuck. He can't stay healthy. That was the 2023 season. It was over before we even started, guys. And what pisses me off most about 2023 and why I have so much more optimism this year, they saw that from start to finish, that team was pond scum. God awful. There was nothing, nothing enjoyable about the 2023 Mets, not named pretty much Francisco Alvarez, and the elite play that you always get from guys like Brandon Nimmo, Kodai Senga's breakout rookie year that we saw being a Cy Young contender already, Pete Alonso doing his thing, obviously, Francisco Lindor doing his thing. Not much else. Really not much else. You know, it's been frustrating. But now you can tell that this team with a lack of pressure, with a lack of a certain expectation, hungry, being the underdog, pushing for playoffs, that's going to help propel them. 
And Carlos Mendoza, I think, is also going to surprise a lot of people as manager this year. I think he's going to be clear cut. There's not much be beating around the bush with him, however you want to take that. Um, Buck Showalter, as much as I love Buck at times, I couldn't stand a lot of the times where he'd have his post game pressers or pre game pressers and just do his absolute best on saying a whole lot of F and nothing. I mean, phenomenal wordplay by Buck. I mean, could literally talk for 10 minutes and give you nothing to gain from it whatsoever. Carlos Mendoza, straight shooter. The Venezuelans like, you know what? I'm going to tell you how it is. Kodai Senga, he's going to start pitching in a week or so. He's going to start to get working and ramping up. And hopefully we can get him back again on the timetable from that point. Once he starts to get ramped up, once he eventually starts to get into, you know, uh, minor league games, rehab games before he makes his MLB debut in the first month or two of the season. All I know is that Carlos Mendoza, I'm really liking his approach so far, what we're seeing from him. I like how he handles the media as well. He's a very smiley guy. We know that he's very happy being positioned that he is for the first, as a first-time manager, aside from the 15 to 20 games he managed for Aaron Boone, because Boone was either out because of health reasons or ejected during his time as bench boss there with the Yankees. But another another guy that I'm excited for and kind of interested to see how this is all going to gel. How is this going to mix, right? Dave with the $2 donation says, must sign the legend known as the Pucky. Yes, if you know, you know. It's so funny seeing you say that, Dave, and not the OG in the channel that usually does the donos with the Sapucky stuff, so that's funny. Thank you for the donation. He's here in spirit. I know he is. Always appreciate you, my friend. CM67 is pumped. Where do you get that hat? It's absolutely beautiful. I got the hat, actually, at my local mall, and I don't have the card on front of me in front of me right now. They're going to be pissed because they actually gifted me this hat for free made some awesome friends at my local mall uh one of the workers there is a mets fan shout out to you john the absolute beauty if you or jay if you watch this at any point um and we were just ch chopping up for a while they curved the hat for me too and it looks like that they're people that i may work with in the near future so very grateful for them um but awesome hat i'm sure you can get it in certain lid stores uh stuff like that but i just don't have their name in front of me and i feel like an absolute schmuck and that's on me so as soon as i have it in front of me next time i will relay the message for you guys without a problem i do not reside in new york however so bear that in mind they do have various locations though so it's not like you can't go it's, it's not like they're terribly far or anything like that pat benson with a five dollar haul says looking forward to trying the new outhouses at truest park thank you so much for the donation i appreciate that pat love that comment too <laughs> oh you're cracking me up that was awesome i was like whatever looking forward to trying the new outhouses at truest park that's just like such a that's just such a hater thing to say that i love it I, I love everything about that do we need more pitching to make a deep playoff run i think so I think so. You need Kodai Singa back, and you probably still need to buy by the traded line for some starting pitching, if you're asking for my opinion. Um, that's just that's where I stand, at least. From Daniel Volga back to Martinez, I'll take that all day. And that, Guys, this was the same Mets team that entered spring last year with Darren Ruff and fucking Daniel Volga back as their DH options. There's so many things better to do in life than want to witness something like that. The bar was so low. It wasn't even below pond scum. Like we were getting to hell burning levels of how low the bar was for the DH when that was happening. Now let's just bring in one of the best DHs in major league baseball. Sign me the hell up. Sign me the hell up. 15 likes away from hundred. Thank you guys and gals so much for that. Greatly appreciate it on Twitter as well. Appreciate everyone that's been watching as well. As we have right around a thousand concurrent viewers, which is insane. Appreciate the love there too. Uh, let's see where do you, I did see Yamamoto get rocked and he can't even make the excuse. Oh, it's his first start in the bigs. They played in Korea. My man, they played in Korea. You can't even say, Oh, it's because of the mound in the States. No, you played in Korea. I don't want to hear it. He got shelled. He got his tits lit. Dodgers fans, they're not having a great time the past 24 hours. And truthfully, I couldn't care less. <laughs> so th there you have it. I legit forgot Ruff even got a shot last year. It's, that's what I mean. It's easy to forget about these things. It's such a night and day difference when you bring in a bat like this. Uh, I'm, guys, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited, too. Because you know, you know how there are guys that, you know, your favorite team acquires where on paper they're great. Like, say they look good. But it's like, I don't know how I feel about him as a fit on the team, right? It just doesn't feel right. So many players as a young baseball fan that I've idolized, not on the Mets, the Mets have been connected to, but they just have not been able to land either because of circumstances, not being proper, not having the proper money at the time. Uh, trade value wasn't there. Something along those lines. JD Martinez has been one of my favorite sluggers in major league baseball for such a long time. I mean, we're going all the way back to even when he had his very short stint with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Like, that's kind of when it really started to birth for me. 
And then he goes to Boston and just absolutely rakes. He wins a championship with them. Like, I'm not even trying to get, I'm like low key. I'm not getting emotional right now. I'm just really, really happy, truthfully, because this, it's a guy you've been wanting. The camera, oh, what, what happened to the camera? Did I get out of focus? I think I'm good, camera-wise. Let me know if I'm wrong, though. This is just someone I've won so on, and I'm grateful that this is not a Wolpons Mets regime where we got him when he was 42, like the Nelson Cruz way. We still got him at an age where he is more than likely going to be quite the productive cleanup batter for this Metropolitan team. It just feels so good. feels so good to finally get a guy that you've wanted so on, and he's in your possession. And even if it's just this year, even if it's just a one-year one hoorah, I hope it's a great one, JD. And if this year goes great, I hope you stay with the Mets until you decide to hang him up and you're done. I, I wouldn't mind that at all. Again, if he can continue to provide power, and the best thing about the Universal DH is it allows longevity with guys like this. Without this, JD Martinez continues his MLB career in the AL, and we never sniff him in a, in a New York Metropolitan uniform. This is what I've been wanting since day one when the Mets got the universal dh we saw in 2020 the flashes of brilliance led by you know dom smith michael conforto those guys were leaning the way offensively then which was an insane time but from that point on we were always salivating at the mouth always wanting to see finally power protection for pete alonzo one but a true dh a true guy where you know what you're getting on a basically everyday basis and the mets have done a phenomenal effing job on doing everything but the right thing in regards to that dh position now, three years later, they have finally come to a realization on what they need, what's out there to pounce to take advantage, and I could not be happier. Uh, Wardy said he wanted JD for so long. Kid's been a Mets fan for three years. Ferrari Frank, that is not true, my friend. I've been a Mets fan my entire life. I did not start watching the Mets on a day-to-day -day basis, though, until the 2015 season. I have my cousin to sincerely thank for that because he was like, Wardy, you got to lock in on this series. That series was when the Mets overtook the Nationals, took over the division. Wilmer Flores, Johanna Cespedes, the rest is history. Now, I've been a Mets fan my entire life, but I was very much more of a casual where I would not watch on the day-to-day, -day, but more, you know, every now and then during the week until I got to my age 15 year in 2015. That's 100% true. Not three years, though, Frank. Happy to see you, though. Long time no see. Hope all has been well on your front, my friend. Um, Bro, I think Mets fans only understand the horrible feeling of leaving a game and the, and the road is completely shut down. Oh, Queens, can't wait for opening day and not having to drive. That's true. I will say this. I'm so excited. Eventually, when it's all done, Queens, what's being built thanks to Steve Cohen around the area is going to be an electric experience for fans, and I cannot wait to see it happen. Obviously, it's going to be years in the making, but when it's all official and done, Queens is going to be quite the destination, I assure you. Um, let's see. Love Yamamoto getting rocked in the first inning. He used it. He used us. He did use us. So, of course, you're going to love when that happens. He's a tremendous talent, though, so I don't like hate the guy. I understood it. It's a leverage game. It's a business. I'm not going to hate anyone too personal about it. But, yes, I wasn't mad to see Yamamoto get rocked, for sure. I will say that much. Um, and I appreciate, and I hear you, Frank, for sure, brother. And like I said, I hope you're doing well. I haven't seen you in a minute. LFGM. 600-pound <laughs> whale who doesn't own a glove. And 37-year-old KBO legend with wrist arthritis platoon of vomit. Yeah, I know. Remember how, like, Darren Ruff was, like, awesome when he came to the Giants? That Giants 2021 team, or was it 2021 or 2022? That 2021 Giants team it was such a trip. Had no business being the way that they were whatsoever. And they just had an absolute ride. They had the found of youth. Nothing made sense at all. And then, of course, they fell short to the Dodgers there to kick off playoffs. Under promise and over deliver, David Stearns is a mastermind. Exactly, Johnny. Exactly. And David Stearns made it known all offseason long. We're not writing off the idea of bringing other guys in. It's not impossible to happen, right? The Mets are very much willing to make that happen just at their price point. And it needs to make sense for the organization as a whole, right? So I just like how you can tell this organization is becoming smarter and it's going to translate on the field with game day approaches and in-game decisions from Mendy. I'm also a Buck hater, though. I don't hate Buck. But there are a lot. There are definitely a lot of qualities to him that I've learned to dislike after seeing him as manager. We went through the highs, the lows, in between. How much do we put blame on him as well? Because again, what was reportedly should that be true? Buck and Epler had a buddy of heads throughout a good chunk of 2023, because Epler wanted Vogie to continue to play, trying to save face with the trade, and you had Buck that was conflicted with a guy that would not take the fucking bat off his shoulders. Literally did a video 
that popped off last summer, me intimid- uh, pretending to be Volgaback, just taking three pitches. <laughs> That's all it is. I mean, so frustrated. A guy lost his confidence so bad. I hope he does well for sure. I 100% hope he does well. Uh, with Toronto, but man, oh man. I mean, just brutal. We had like a month and a half of like prime Daniel Volgaback in 2022. And then it was it was a shit show from that point on for the most part. Let Stearns cook. Absolutely. I hope Mets fans have now realized what David Stearns is all about. It's about waiting. It's about being strategic, smart. This is why Steve Cohen hired him, folks. And oh, yeah, he grew up a diehard Mets fan. He wants to be here. He wants to build a perennial contender, a championship caliber team year in and year out. This is how you do it. And honestly, the thing that I'm in part most excited about as we get to the draft, guys, Having Chris Gross in this organization is going to do wonders. He is now leading the way for the Mets in, uh, pardon me, if I'm not mistaken, in the amateur scouting development area. He's going to be absolutely huge. Was pried away from the Astros. The Astros have led the way the past decade plus since Chris Gross has been in his position, especially as guys that were drafted and have hit the MLB level from the draft pick for the Astros. The Mets all the way to the bottom at worst. They've struggled so heavily to get consistent games out of their draft picks over the past decade. Chris Gross is an absolute beauty in that role. We were able to get him because he has that connection with David Stearns during their time in Houston. I'm so pumped up about that. So as excited as we are about David Stearns, I'm equally as excited about the other guys, the supporting cast in that front office. Between Chris Gross and Andy Green, you are going to see yourself as we get to the trade deadline, as we get to the draft, type of impact these guys have in the organization so that is what i will leave you with everybody we're going to wrap up the show now i want to thank you all so much for watching live on our replay breaking down the latest news as yes the new york metropolitans have signed jd martinez to a one-year 12 million dollar deal that's really a 14 million dollar deal that really is 4.5 million dollars this year but with the 110 percent taxes 9 million and he's going to be paid 4.5 million this year and then from 20 20- 34 to 2038 he's paid 1.5 mil each year it's a lot you know it's very interesting but all i know is that the mets got jd martinez they got the refing guy and i cannot wait to talk more about him so stay tuned guys i'm sure we'll be live tomorrow either breaking down the mets game against the yanks maybe more on jdm maybe we'll have a guest we will be on the lookout i appreciate everyone that watched on twitter too we're over 1,000 concurrent viewers there on YouTube. We're at 300 plus. Thank you guys all so much for the support. Make sure to follow me on Twitter here at WordyNYM for all your Mets coverage needs, thoughts, reactions, and here on YouTube, the same applies. Cannot wait to talk to you guys again soon. Mets get JDM, and I'm signing.